Good afternoon. Welcome to today's City Club of uh, Cleveland's Forum. My name is Ralph Delarada. I've got the great pleasure of being the president of the City Club of Cleveland this year. City Club of Cleveland was established in October of 1912. And since that time, it has served as one of the nation's premier public podiums for civic dialogue, covering truly the most important topics of our time. The City Club draws its guest speakers from a variety of fields and backgrounds, <clears throat> providing a national forum of free speech. These speakers, who are rich in experience and knowledge, are here to spur discussion and learning among the citizens of Cleveland, as well as to our greater national audience. <clears throat> Today, I have the pleasure and privilege of introducing a renowned sports figure who also happens to be a personal friend. Our speaker today is Billy Packer, the Dean of College Basketball announcing, who worked 34 consecutive Final Fours as a broadcast <coughs> analyst. Billy said he started in high school, but, you know, who knows. <laughs> the timing of Billy's appearance at the City Club is not an accident. For all of you College Hoops fans out there, March Madness is almost upon us, and we look at this as a hallowed time of year. Um, so we're very, very fortunate to have Billy with us today. Um, as a Duke grad, and I had to wear my Duke tie today, Billy, if you'll excuse me, being a Wake Forest grad, people who know me uh, know I wear my heart on my sleeve for Duke basketball. But uh, Billy's been part of the opposition. He was a great player at Wake Forest and uh, assistant coach there. He's a demon deacon. But the one thing I have to say about Billy is able to do one thing I'm not, and that's be very objective about the game of basketball. And for those of us who have listened to him over the years know his objectivity and his analysis has been nothing short of fantastic. Let me tell you a little bit <clears throat> more about Billy Packer there. There's so much I can say, but I'm going to keep it short so we'll have time for questions because I know we have a, see a lot of people I know, a lot of former college players, none of which you would know, Billy. They're not that famous uh, here today, but uh, <laughs> a lot of my friends here. Um, Billy has been described as a sharp and well-prepared analyst. Uh, with a remarkable ability to dissect the strategy of a game. He understands the nuances of college basketball far greater than many of us could ever hope to. At the same time, he's quite blunt, and at times his candid and outspoken views have proven to be co controversial. He began his broadcast career at NBC in 1974 and joined CBS in 1981, where he spent 27 seasons as a lead analyst and CBS's sports college basketball coverage. And for all of us uh, growing up and watching uh, March Madness in the Final Four, it's synonymous with Billy Packer. Billy won a Sports Emmy Award for Outstanding Sports Personality Analyst in 1993 and received the Kurt Gowdy Award, an award designed for members of the electronic and print media with outstanding contributions to basketball. He won that in 1996 was noted in 1996. He also received the North Carolina Sportscaster of the Year Award. Billy Packer's sports experience extends well beyond his pre-announcing years to when he was a distinguished athlete in high school and college. Billy grew up as a very gifted schoolboy athlete. Uh, he was the son of a Lehigh University coach. He became a Pennsylvania All-State basketball selection and two-time Connie Mack Pennsylvania baseball most outstanding player while playing at Liberty High School. Billy went on to attend Wake Forest University where he was an all-ACC guard and it led his team to two ACC titles. He appeared in two NCAA tournaments and one Final Four in 1962. So Billy's played the game at a high level, he's achieved it at a high level, so he knows what he's talking about. After receiving an undergraduate degree in economics, Billy returned to Wake Forest as an assistant coach and began his broadcasting career seven years later. Billy Packer is now a member of the prestigious College Basketball Hall of Fame. Packer has also written several books, including Hoops, College Basketball's 25 Greatest Teams, History of the Final Four, and Why We Win. During March Madness of this year, he will be featured with Bob Knight and Win Las Vegas' Survive in Advance a series of five one-hour tournament television programs analyzing the 2009 NCAA National Championship. The college basketball tournament platform will include broadcast television on Fox Sports, net with live commentary, top-tier guests, and interactive TV. There'll be fantasy leagues, computer games, and other internet activities 
This is for a man who tells me he doesn't even own a computer, so I'm really impressed. Outside of sports, Billy is an astute businessman. He's an investor and real estate developer. He co-founded Tour de Pont and Tour of China, as well as the Buckler Challenge, Challenger. <clears throat> he currently lives in Charlotte, North Carolina with his wife, and they have three children, three grandchildren. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the sports icon, Billy Packer, to the City Club. Good to have you here. Thank you very much. I uh, was I had the pleasure of receiving this book today, uh, which reflects all of the great people that have been here, I not being one of, and it was kind of interesting. I, I opened it up in 1946 to 52, Fear in Abundance. If that's not appropriate for a uh, topic today of a, of a, of a talk. Uh, these are tough times. Uh, and uh, my talk basically is going to revolve a little bit about sports, and I spend 99% of my time in business, so, and I'm a Polish guy, so, uh, which is pretty good for Cleveland. I'm uh, often wrong, but I'm never in doubt. So today, basically, I want this, uh, this talk and this gathering with you people to be reflective of, of, of my attitude in that regard. Uh, we can't direct the wind, but we can adjust the sails. If there was anything that's any more appropriate than that statement in the times we're going through, uh, I don't know what it would be. And I, I think back of, had there been other hard times, I like to do a lot of reading. You go back to, to uh, New Year's Eve, 1776, and I just try to get the picture of where we are today. And here you have a bitter, cold Philadelphia weather. You got this guy, Washington, with a bunch of troops that are outnumbered 10 to 1. 38% of them got frostbite. Not one guy has more four, than four rounds of ammunition. None of them have been paid. Now, that's a hell of a team to have behind you if you're Washington. <laughs> now, sitting on the other side of the river, these, the, the, these British that, that have everybody paid, they've got the great ammunition, they've got outnumbering 10 to 1, as I said, in regard to forces, and they're going to have a nice New Year's Eve party. And what does Washington tell his guys to do? Hey, let's get in the boats. We're going over there. We're going to attack. Uh, boy, out of the box. That's, you, know, you know, if I'm one of those guys, then the hell with you. I haven't been paid, and I'm cold. I got frostbite. I'm not getting on the boat. But they get on the boats, and they go across that river, and all of us Americans realize what they did. They won the battle. What, what are we talking about today? We, we couldn't be in as dire straits as those guys were. Frostbite, no ammunition, 10 to 1 being, out, you know, being outmanned and go over there and win the battle. That's what we're up against today. Now, a lot of people say, well, how do we, Mr. Axelrod, I, I thought you'd be with, uh, with Mr. Obama today. Did, did he let you off? Have we ever seen a double like this guy right here? <laughs> but, but anyway, I'm back, back to the subject. Why, why those guys fought so damn hard, now that we know the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey would say, is because Washington, when they got off the other side, burned the boats. He burned the boats, okay? Hey, man, let's face it. You guys are going to fight to death because there's no way to go back across that river. And that's about where we are today. we got to be like Washington. we got to think out of the box. And so that's what I'm going to talk about today, kind of weaving some of my experiences. I played in college for a guy by the name of Bones McKinney, who was an incredible Baptist minister in North Carolina. And he also was the coach at Wake Forest, and double team there, small little Baptist school, didn't have money for both a coach and a minister. So he, he double teamed. And Lake Forest hadn't won much. The big school at that time was the University of North Carolina with the great Frank McGuire that won the national championship undefeated team in 57. And nobody beats the University of North Carolina. But what happens? Wake Forest is going to play them for the championship. And so, of course, we're going to get ready. We're excited. I'm just a sophomore at the time. And, and boy, is this really going to be some experience. And we get over to the, to the arena. And we line up to go into the player's entrance. And the man standing there said, could we have your player's participant passes? 